This is a Space Mouse Pro by 3D Connection and in this video I'm going to show you how I use it with SolidWorks. So the Space Mouse Pro now sits in the middle of the range with the 3D Connection CAD interface devices with the Enterprise versions above which have an LCD screen and the portable versions below. So this is a device that I use every single day and it massively helps me both in terms of productivity and ergonomics. So at the base is mostly dead space but there's like a rubberized mat but above is where the action happens. Now the sensor is common to every single one of the 3D connection input devices even the uh, the cheaper portable devices but what sets this apart is the array of buttons around the edge. So as standard you have a number of views so front right top and the ability to turn it around we have a fit to screen, which in SOLIDWORKS is the equivalent of F, four programmable macro buttons that actually change depending on what application you're in, and then basically the things that you do with your left hand on a normal keyboard, escape, shift, control, alt, and menu. Now the unique thing with the 3D connection device is that all of these buttons can be reprogrammed to do whatever you like, and I've got it set up in a particular way and that's what I'm going to show you. So I think the best way of showing you how I use the Space Mesh Pro is just to do a quick little um, sample part, something quite simple. So the main feature of every single Space Mouse in the range is this six degree of freedom um, puck, as they call it. Now, the way I have it set up is if I hit the menu button and advanced settings, um, we can see that there's six, the six degrees of freedom are side to side which I have it set to uh, pan, back and forth, pan vertical, up and down. Now that zooms in and out, back and forth. Oops, fit, you can see already, see how the fit button is useful. Um, back and forth, side to side, which is another uh, rotate and twist, which rotates. Now that counterintuitively comes in reverse and I prefer it. When I tilt right, the thing goes right because when you use a space mouse, it is much like um, grabbing hold of the objects and actually physically moving it around. Now, it's probably a good place, now we know what the puck does, to look at the menu button. The menu button, maybe in time I'll end up changing something else, but to begin with, because I'm fiddling around with the settings, adjusting the speed and the sensitivity until I get it how I like it, um, also fiddling around with the buttons, I've actually, set up the buttons as so. Now everything's pretty standard, escape, control, shift are all exactly there on my three fingers, which is really nice because it prevents me from having to sort of have a contorted position. You sort of get a claw hand in the corner of your keyboard over here. Um, the one thing that I have changed actually is alt. Now maybe I'm missing something, but I never use alt when I'm using CAD. Um, if you know what alt does typically, I've used loads of different CAD platforms, just don't use it. So I have put that to delete, which is uh, nice. So that pretty much self-explanatory for there. Fit, we've seen. I'll show you the views in a second. I've got four buttons up here. The first is um, S, which is one of the quick menus. We've got measure, construction geometry, and smart dimension. And I'll do a sample part to show you those now. Okay, so if I wanted to do a sample part, um, I would start a sketch, and I might want to sketch on the top plane. So press the T for the top, and I'm, there I am straight away, I'm on the top plane. And I've got a video on, um, on my shortcuts, and I quite often use the, uh, the wheel. Now I've got mine at work set up with eight directions, this home version I've got it set up with um, four, but Draw a circle, drag up to dimension. I might put that as 60 mil. Uh, another thing that I've got, you know, it's nice to alternate. I've got four set up as dimension. So that's four, okay. So already I'm starting to move here and it's after about a week, it's become second nature. Um, button one is my S key and that allows me to have various editing tools. So throw in a circle there, press four. And what you'll notice is it, A, it's ergonomic, but B, there's less of this kind of stuff going on. I'm, 
I can be editing things whilst moving and it's really, it really does speed you up. That said, the main reason why I have this mouse is for ergonomic reasons and I'll go through that in the review, but I was getting some real cramp actually in this hand from using the mouse in sort of a contorted uh, claw again. So we'll throw in a dimension on here, or we'll just say 40. And what I might want to do now is go top. I'm gonna to put a series of lines. And let's say I wanted to put a construction line in here. Escape, that comes in useful, avoiding this kind of stuff. Um, click it, I've set this key up to uh, construction geometry, and that has saved a highlight, a right click, and a toggle. Um, really, really useful, or even worse than that, it moves, saves a mouse move, a click, a movement, an escape, an edit, a four construction. So one simple button that I've set up, I use that all of the time, and um, it just saves me so much time. <laughs> you know, I don't actually know how I do without it now. I'm gonna delete that line, don't want it. So let's exit the sketch. We're now going to extrude. Now, I can go through the features menu here, but I know that I've got my shortcut key on S, so I can just extrude that. Um, let's extrude it to say 60 mil. And hit OK. There we have it. So, now I'm running this in a virtualized machine on a Mac, and it's still running fairly smoothly. I'm quite happy with that. But we can zoom in and out, pan, up and down, pan left and right, and I twist to rotate, and then the sort of tilts allow me to zoom. So let's suppose I've made the classic beginner mistake of losing my part, just hit fit, back it comes. Right, something I find myself doing all of the time, especially on complex geometry, is the measure tool, which normally lives under the evaluate measure. There we go. Now, now I've lost useful menus and it's a bit of a pain that several clicks so I've just got that configured on two and I can get all the data I need. Let's suppose I wanted to find out uh, multiple faces I've got control here and you'll notice actually that on the control key there's this little um, sort of raised bump here that is really useful just to uh, sort of locate, uh, locate the key there. So escape out of that and I'll just show you some of these more advanced um, views. I say advanced, not particularly advanced. So I've got the top, that's how I started. Hit front. Um, quite often I'll find that my front view will be in the wrong orientation. So I just hit the space bar. I might decide that I want this to be nice. It's a bit of a nonsense given that um, this is a, a symmetrical part. But I can hit space bar hit this button here and then choose this actually to be my front and that's reconfigured my front my right my top now let's suppose i wanted to move it around i can just hit this button and it twists it and i thought that'd be useless but actually i use it all the time now let's suppose i want to uh, create a sketch on this plane here so let's just turn my planes on for a second okay Let's do it on this plane here. Oops, on my right plane. Exactly my sketch. And we'll do a sketch on the right plane. Okay, hit my right. There I am on the sketch. And it can get quite confusing, actually. Um, in this particular viewpoint, you know, I might want to pan across a sketch. So what you can actually do is hit this button here, which locks the rotation. Let's zoom in on that. So this is a rotation lock. So when I hit that, you know, I can twist and nothing happens. My only available movements are zoom in and out and pan left and right. And that's quite useful. And I particularly find that useful on the uh, drawing mode. So I'll just create a drawing from part. Uh, we'll just use that there. 
chuck in a couple of these. So project some views across. And that is fantastic for dimensioning. And you'll notice actually that when I press my S key now, it is contextual. When I say I keep saying S, it's my one. It is contextual within whatever drawing mode I'm in. And I think if you press and hold, there we go, you actually see what all of the different buttons do uh, in context. On the more advanced versions where you've got lots of buttons across the top, you do actually have a display screen which replaces the on-screen display. So there we have it, that's a, an overview of how I use this 3D mouse in SolidWorks. I couldn't be happier with it, it saves me pain, frankly. It, it makes my life a lot easier, but it also makes things a lot quicker. Now, I'm gonna do a video response to uh, NYCNC and their uh, most overrated accessory ever. I sort of agree with him, but I think the difference is, if you use one full time, you know, you, I'm in a design engineer position and I'm using this for seven, eight hours a day. It saves me a lot of hassle. If you're in sort of the machinist, you know, setter sort of role, you jump in between, you've got a lot of variety in tasks, you know, it's probably less necessary. But it's really, really good piece of kit. I absolutely love it. And, um, you know, I don't think I'll ever go back. This is, uh, is me set in my CAD life forever. So if you like these videos, do like, subscribe, and comment. Tell me how you use your mouse. It can be used across all kinds of different platforms. I'll be interested in learning some tips, tricks, and uh, if you think I'm missing out on anything, then uh, do let me know. So until next time, uh, we'll see you again.